Off a day, everybody. All right, so I'm excited about today's um, presentation, uh, partly because it's uh, being led by Banji and Fran, uh, who have been, uh, you know, I just want to, before we start, and, you know, just want to thank both of them for what they're doing, um, and on top of what they're doing, uh, you know, leading this area really is important to all of us, and I, I do want to thank you very much. Uh, so uh, today, uh, what we are doing is uh, we're going to be going over uh, the uh, action items um, that have been developed by the uh, Thriving Natural Resources um, Focus Area for the Guam Green Growth um, Action Framework. Uh, and the purpose of this meeting is to um, go over the projects that or the action items that uh, were developed by the group. Uh, some of them uh, are, have an intersect with some of the other focus areas. And um, this gives our um, uh, heads of the, the codes, the chairs for each of these focus areas an opportunity to um, address that and, uh, and coordinate in some cases with uh, leaders in other, um, in other um, areas. And so uh, today in the steering, the, we've asked a member of, um, each of the focus areas to be present while um, the leads for this area make their presentation. And uh, this is an effort to coordinate effort uh, and to be supportive. I see the governor is logging on. So we'll just wait a few more mo moments for her. All right. Okay, governor. Thank you very much. So today, uh, Vanji Luhan uh, and uh, Fran uh, from uh, the Sea Grant uh, Program at UOG are going to be presenting um, uh, the focus area on thriving natural resources. So with that, um, Governor, do you have any words that you wanna share before we start? Okay. Uh, Austin, is there anything you wanted to uh, touch on before we pass it to Van? Uh, could we let uh, Lauren uh, do a couple of announcements just in case we run over time at the end? We just want to make sure everybody catches those. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Governor. Hello. Uh, thank you, G3 Steering Committee and Natural or Thriving Natural Resources Team. So listening to some of the feedback from the team leads from the Thriving Natural Resources Team, I'll be developing an updated working document of the action framework that will have clearer guidance and instructions on how to work with the do uh, document and how to develop your framework components. And um, another quick update is that next week we'll have our working meeting focused on sustainable alliances. And that's November 19th, Thursday from 1.30 to 2.30 and on December 3rd, Thursday, 1.30 to 2.30, we'll focus on G3 Action Framework Next Steps as a result from the meetings that we've had these past weeks. And that's it for me. Banji, the floor is yours with Fran. Thank you so much and thank you for all your kind words. I hope that you're going to, we're gonna live up to the expectation you have of us. The pressure is on. So Fran. <laughs> Fran yeah. Lauren, can we share our screen? Yes, let me get that for you. We have a um, very nice uh, cross section of people that are part of our group. And so hopefully we're capturing the all the very um, interactive conversations we've been having and all of the interests that so many people that are participating in this effort. So as we've said, uh, I'm Vanjie Luhan and Fran is our co-chair. The committee members include Walter from PA, Dr. Ramundo from Marine Lab, Christine from Department of Agriculture, Romina from the from UOG Climate Change, Elsa from the CIS, Julie from the Micronesian Conservation Coalition, Edwin from BSP, Jesse from EPA, Pep from DPR, um, Patrick from BSP, Patrick Lujan from uh, Historic Preservation, I mean the SHPO office, 
Ian from GHRA, Sandra from Tossi Group, which is a, a nonprofit organization, Kyle, who is our youth in, uh, ambassador along with Grace. And they have really brought insight into how we're, we would like to move forward. Heidi Ballendorf is with the Wave Clubs and Dr. Udine is from the College of Natural uh, um, Sciences. Okay, so our section is a combination of the three goals. Uh, 15 is uh, life above land. Thir uh, 13 is climate change and 14 is life below, which is something that when we're dealing with natural resources, that connection, we're very uh, uh, interested in the connection between what happens on land affects our oceans and all the water around us. Uh, next slide, Fran. Okay, so I just wanted to get into the goal process and how we got to where we are today with our goals. And so in, on day one, when we first launched the, um, the G3, um, we were given like the targets and the goals for the UN Sustainable Development uh, Goals. So we took that and we sort of like looked at what they had already and um, we wanted to determine, you know, what was adaptable in Guam, what was doable, um, is there anything already on, uh, in their goals that are ongoing, and then whether there are prior priority or that we uh, really need to do it here on Guam. And so just a couple examples is uh, conserve and uh, restore terrestrial and freshwater um, Ecosystem. This is a UN Sustainable Development Goal, and this is like their metric forest area as a proportion of total land area. Um, and then sustainable fishing, just as an example. Um, I'm not going to read it all, but uh, the metric is proportion of fish stocks within biological. Uh, ooh, what happened? I can't go back. Anyway, so we took the metrics and we uh, looked at them and we said, oh, maybe we can do these things on Guam. Um, and so then we talked amongst ourselves in the group and we decided, um, you know, let's just go one by one and see what's already ongoing and see how we can make that um, our goal um, and adjust things. And so then just recently, like a couple of weeks ago, we did a prioritization exercise because we do have 32 goals under the thriving natural resources. And then Lola just transferred one more from healthy and prosperous communities to us because it's relating to coral reefs and um, it's already funded. And so we just took it on because, um, you know, it's ready to go. And so our prioritization exercise was a high, medium, low. So we looked at each of our goals um, and we came up with this definition high, meaning we critically need to do it here on Guam. Medium means that it's already ongoing uh, by an agency or an organization. And then low is like, uh, it needs resources to accomplish. And um, just because they were hang high, medium and low doesn't mean it's important. They're all important. It's just, um, this is how we as a group decided to move forward. Okay, so I'll turn it over to Vanjie. <laughs> Thank you. One of the things that um, we're looking at when we uh, decided on our priorities is the work that's already being accomplished. And so a, a lot of times you'll see that it's the same agencies or the same people doing all the work. So we really, because we have limited resources, we really wanted to focus on what was, uh, what we can actually accomplish in that 10 year frame. So um, I'm going to do the, although as Fran said, there's 32, I believe for terrestrial, we have 13 and we'll highlight them. But the main goal is to protect, restore, promote sustainable use of our terrestrial ecosystems, sustainable management of forests and halt and reserve land deg degradation and halt biodiversity losses. And so um, this is a picture of, of some of the work that oh. Austin Group is doing to ensure that watersheds are done. So you'll see that um, we went, as I said, we went through it. These are just a sample. All of the goals have a ranking, but we'll give you an example of the ones that are high. One of the um, ones that is attached that we see across the board is effectively managing watersheds. And so in 10 years, it will take, We our big goal is to be able to effectively manage at least 
50% of Guam's watersheds. This is also similar to the goal of the Micronesia Challenge. And so when we were evaluating all of this, we were also looking at what are already existing in policy that uh, through an executive order or through something that the government has adopted already. Um, in the effective watershed management, it was ranked high because it's needed for um, to accomplish the, the rest of the goals related to terrestrial. But one of the con uh, concerns we have is that in order for us to accomplish this, there will be some funding requirements. We've identified a lot of the coral reef funding as well as the Department of Interior coral funds that can be used to affect, to do some of this management. Um, we can also use some funding available in other partnerships. And so we're really trying to identify other partnerships, including um, especially for the Southern Master uh, plan area of uh, GWA because we rely heavily on surface water in the, in the south. So we did come up with objectives, action items that are going to be occurring, metrics and the leads on that. The second one that we wanted to highlight during this meeting was the 100% of the Micronesia Challenge goals are met, which is the effective management of terrestrial resources. And so the goal is actually 50% for marine and 30% for terrestrial. It's going to be considered um, some of the, it, the specifics under the Micronesia Challenge will be identified in this particular 10-year uh, goal. Um, those are actually identified in the Micronesia Challenge. So that's why it's ranked medium is because it's really an ongoing effort. There's multiple funding sources for the activities that we've uh, decided on that. Uh, we do have already a strategy and now we are going to update it with the new targets for fisheries, invasive species, and climate change. There's This is an active group and active um, collaboration, not just on Guam, but regionally as well. Next. So that is now the above, above water. Fran? Oh, no, this is still one. There's one more event. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one of the things that we talked about last week is really that uh, that somewhat cross cut across the board for sustainable um, communities really is about developing considerations. This is also related to our climate change impacts where we need to look more about how to reduce erosion because that will impact watersheds. How to ensure that if you have um, needs for ungulate control, uh, wetland improvement, mangrove health, all of this is under development considerations. Sometimes we think that uh, all the work is going to just be about planting trees, removing uh, trash to improve our resources, uh, removing invasive. But what this really is, is really looking at how we're actually using what we're doing in development and in, uh, incorporating best management practices. And for the most part, trying to look at natural based solutions, rain gardens being one of them. This was ranked high because it doesn't currently exist and we found that in order if we achieve this we're going to be able to address multiple goals across the board not just for this particular group but for other groups as well um, we've identified we are going to be looking into department of interiors tap grant as well as local funds and also looking at to see if we could just you know, improve policy that incorporates natural based solutions into development standards Um, the, the other uh, goal is climate action. I think Romina is on this call and so she can add additional um, input if she, if after we show the slides. But the main goal here and the, is to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. Uh, we will, a couple of days ago, uh, the PDM published the report about climate change and the impacts for Guam. There's a lot of things over the long period of time that we will start to see. In fact, we are already starting to see the impacts from climate change related to our, our natural resources. But we're also starting to see it in terms of disease and all those other things that are associated with climate change. We chose one big goal for that. Uh, Fran, next slide. Oh, I'm sorry, we chose two yeah. goals, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I'll do the second one first. Climate change resiliency, which is something that I know that is a, a goal within the climate change the, and resiliency um, commission, 
which Romina King and I are leading. And so these are the identified uh, smart objectives that are in that strategy. In all of these things, what we were looking for are what are people already doing that can be incorporated into this G3 strategy. So that way, it's not reinventing the wheel, but having an umbrella from which all of these um, activities are then monitored and we can then track progress, which I, I think is one of the goals. It's ranked high because it's very critical for us as we are, we are uh, experiencing the impacts of climate change. Um, there are some resources that are needed, including some staff time. Uh, we're, we tried to identify some funding, including some resiliency grants. There are a number of people uh, and a broader group of people that will be involved in this, including private sector people. The um, first goal is really to try to get the youth involved. This is something that fortunately we have two people that are sitting in our group that are ambassadors and have really expressed to us the need to get the youth involved in terms of developing action items, looking at metrics, looking at objectives and looking at policy. They really want to be engaged. And so that's something that I think getting the youth involved, which we see, which we see a lot already. So, so they are interested. Sorry. I think that what they really want is better um, opportunity for them to have that open discussion. Uh, the other thing is that what they mentioned to us is that there needs to be a stronger succession plan. The people that do this work, we've been doing it for a while and we're getting old. We don't look old, but we're getting old. And some of the things and the knowledge that we have, we're not, there's not necessarily a formal way to capture that. Um, I, I look at this issue when this came up and I, uh, I'm thinking of the program that was started with Romina King when she was a Coral Reef Fellow, was Guardians of the Reef, where we take students, we teach um, students in high school about coral reef management, and then they go and they talk to uh, elementary school kids. I meet up with a lot of kids that say that they were part of that, um, the Guardians of the Reef program that are now engaged with the environment. And I think we just need more programs like that. That's one thing that we're hearing from our youth ambassadors is they wanna be engaged, they just don't know where and how, and how it could be sustained. So um, I, I can ask if Romina or Kyle are on the line, if you wanted to add to that or the section on climate change. No, you're doing great, Vange. Okay, thank you. That's Romina. Okay, so um, we can talk about that a little bit more. So maybe we can now talk about uh, above, above water. Below water. <laughs> Below water, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so the other goal that was assigned to us was live below water. And so the ultimate goal is to conserve and sustainably use the ocean, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. Um, and so the two pr high priority goals that we came up with were, it's relating to the Micronesia challenge. So 50% uh, marine resources are effectively managed. Um, we rank that high um, because I feel like um, it really needs to be done. Uh, there's a lot of work that uh, is ongoing with the Micronesia Challenge initiative. And I think moving forward, like if we were to do a dashboard, there's already like a lot of um, work that we can start inputting into that dashboard um, to show our progress. Um, the other thing is that we need funding for an island-wide uh, coral reef and fishery independent monitoring. And so currently uh, monitoring is ongoing, is ongoing here on Guam, but it's mostly inside MPAs. There's not an island-wide uh, scale monitoring. And so it'd be great to have something like that so that we can understand more how to effectively manage our resources. Uh, and by doing so, we want to try to uh, look at increasing policies and laws for fishing and enforcement. Um, as everyone knows, um, we, are, we do lack enforcement here um, on Guam. And then the other objective would be to establish that long-term uh, monitoring program when we find the funding for it. Uh, and then we also want to improve the management of MPAs um, and the ongoing coral uh, restoration work that uh, Dr. Raimundo is working on. 
Um, the second uh, high priority goal is, why does it keep doing that? Uh, implementation of a fisheries management plan, including any new or new, any revised or new legislation. And so what we wanna do is create a position or contract to do a legal review of all fisheries regulations. So we want to evaluate the legislation pertaining to uh, fishing and boat use and um, also look at enforcement and see how we can improve, uh, you know, in these areas. So in order to do that, we need to understand like what's already in the books and you know, what are the gaps? And then after doing that, we'll be able to create a holistic fisheries management plan for Guam, like for all the MPAs, um, I know that a lot of MPAs like around uh, the world or in, in the Pacific have management plans. So they actually have MPA coordinators that manage um, their MPAs. So it'd be great to um, have a management plan for that uh, species guidance, just specific to, to species. Like if you wanted to manage how the parrot fish is, like have a guidance for that. We just recently had a new uh, scuba ban um, law passed or enacted um, and we probably need uh, a plan for that and how to manage it um, and then maybe also do a legal assessment on all the existing policies and regulations um, to, to help out with this goal um, and then um, BSB who I think is working on the seashore reserve plan wants to also integrate um, all these um, action items. And so we rank both of these things high and they both need resources, which we've identified to be the, you know, it could be the Guam Coral Reef Initiative or the Coral Reef Natural Resource Grants out of OIA. Um, and we do need uh, staff time to, in order to do this, we, we need to find champions to like make these things happen. So this is like one person's like job to just do this almost every day. Um, why did it do that again? Okay, so thanks to Kyle, he shared the Hawaii dashboard. And so I went on there and I just extracted this natural resource management uh, um, measure, the way, the way they're um, measuring things and reporting it out. And so it's kind of in line with um, everything that we're doing. You wanna increase freshwater capacity. That's in our goal. We want to um, protect our watersheds. We wanna manage our, uh, our marine protected areas. There is some information or goals about invasive species control as well and native species. So it's kind of uh, in line with Hawaii's for some reason, it just it just happened to be that way. Um, and then for watershed forest area and marine, why is it doing that? marine managed areas, um, we already have data through the Micronesia Challenge Initiative that again, like as I mentioned earlier, it could start um, you know, reporting and showing um, where we're at with that. And then we also identified challenges and then Vanj, do you wanna talk about that? Vanji? Oh. Hello? Sorry, I was on mute. Oh. Um, there, there is a lot of work going on across the 32 goals already. So one of the next steps that we're going to do is, of course, get um, input from all the leads where the status is. But I think that we're going to try to develop um, a better mechanism, and, and I'm hoping that the dashboard will help us. First, to get the baseline data so that we know it, how much progress we're making, and then start to monitor the progress that we have. Um, but we've, when we were going through this exercise, we realized that there's a lot of challenges to, to actually accomplish all the goals, including just the ones that we've seen that we've identified either as high or medium. Some of our challenges are, although we have a lot of federal grants, um, there still needs additional funding. We need to find a champion for some of these things that will really take it from, um, if it's an, especially if it's policy, gathering the data, working with the policymakers to in ensure that the project is actually taken to its full, uh, the whole gamut of where it needs to be so that we can be implementing as well as bringing it out to the community. Um, one of the things that we have is that there's, uh, although we, there's a lot of technology um, available for communications, we still have a lot of communication problems in terms of getting the information out to the public, 
even within our own agencies, sometimes there's a lot of work being done in the agencies that it's not very transparent and it's not easy to communicate the information. So that's also going to be a challenge. One of the other ones that we have is um, buy-in from stakeholders. There's a lot of things within the things that we are, that when we're in natural resources, we believe everybody, oh, this is great. Everybody's going to agree with it. But our experience has been that, well, maybe not. Maybe that, that uh, things that we think are important or how we should address a problem is not necessary for the whole broader stakeholder group or the entire community uh, won't necessarily um, buy into it or believe that it's critical. We've seen this in terms of establishing MPAs. It took us a very long time for the scuba spear bill to get passed. So we understand that this is going to be harder, uh, engaging the community, getting buy-in, getting policymakers to understand, as well as ensuring that within each of the agencies, there's leadership that is going to shepherd some of the ideas that we have so that the work that we've identified will actually get completed. And the last thing is um, youth engagement. Um, we were, when we were talking with our youth ambassadors, they really feel that there's a disconnect between what is happening in the agencies with what they feel is impacting them, as well as how they can support that. In one of the suggestions was they really want to be engaged with multi-generational um, te uh, information technology, I mean, knowledge transfer, that a mentorship between the Mononcle and the youth, they really are ready for that. They don't see it necessarily happening in their family. So they really want that opportunity to be more engaged with the Mononcle and people that are, that have had experience dealing with these issues, have seen what it used to be in the past. And so I think that that's something that we really want to listen to what they have to say so that we can make them more part of the process. And I think with that engagement, we will probably see better success in what we're doing. Fran, do you have anything else? No, I think that you covered it. So I is Kyle on the line? I don't think so. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah, he's. Kyle, I really wanted to give you an opportunity to share with us that part of the challenge that you have identified for that you should express to us. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to say thank you. You actually you hammered everything uh, with all the points like we brought up last meeting. And just to, to echo like what we were talking about, it's really, um, we're here to, to listen and to be a part of the solution. And we don't want it to be like disconnected so that, you know, when we're, when we're 30, 40 and in positions of, you know, like government and whatnot, uh, we don't want to make the mistakes and we don't want to be asking the questions. So like what to do. And so we're asking those questions now. And, you know, um, I would rather learn from, you know, people who are working in, in government or uh, these, uh, organization to already have the knowledge than to learn from the internet, you know, about climate change and how that affects um, the global like population. So I want to learn about how it affects me, my family, the community, um, and, you know, learning from the people who are here. And so that, that's, that's something that like, I, I never really hear that from other people. So every time I talk to a, adults or other like, um, even like some of my friends from around, um, we don't really hear the connection uh, between adults and, and the youth. And, you know, we're, we're, we're just trying to listen and trying to be of help. And so, yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kyle. Um, Romina, did you, did you want to add anything on climate change? Uh, no, uh, just that the Pacific Island Regional Climate Assessment, uh, the impacts of climate change to Guam has been officially released. And um, I think that'll be a nice uh, resource and cornerstone um, for us for this. Great. Uh, okay, so um, that's our presentation. So thank you so much. Um, is there any questions? We will have the, our full um, spreadsheet or matrix available and with all the room for each of the 32 goals that we have.
All right, are, any questions from or comments from anybody that's on the call? Uh, one question and I really, what is MPA? I might, I'm, <laughs> I didn't uh, looking. Marine what? protected area. Okay. okay. So like uh, Tumon Bay, Achan right. Reef, those places, yeah. Could I just make a quick comment? <clears throat> Sure. And yes. that is, um, I think everything that you guys have presented here, like you said, is entwined into the Micronesian challenge, right? And the Micronesian challenge was a mandate from the Pacific Island leaders. And in, the, in that sense, it is um, continuously being uh, monitored and uh, uh, check for progress in each of the regions because in those meetings they make a presentation and they advance it. So every island has a coordinator or a, a, a main person, and that's Vanji. Yes. And so, so Vanji and I met, and I'm going to try and find some funding for the Micronesian Challenge. But when you were talking about the staff, uh, that you need a champion. Um, where do you see this champion coming from? What agency? I, I think in each of the goals, what we find that the success of certain things, for example, if we want to look at the climate change one, that um, it's being done un under the commission, but for every agency that looks at it, maybe if it's infrastructure, really having somebody in, in DPW that actually understands how um, floodplain impacts are, things like that. Who, what are natural um, uh, best management practices for building codes, things. Uh, it needs to be somebody that is in that agency that can then be on top of the, that understands the problem and then be on top of it so that they can give uh, feedback or, or um, encourage people to move forward things like that. The, in, in many of these, there is a champion, but for some of them, the ones that we haven't had, we've identified what the problem is, but we actually haven't started any of the work. Those are the champions we need. We need to have, make sure that, for example, at, at uh, Guam EPA, when we're talking about um, watershed management, uh, that they're in someone in their program is on top of the watershed issues. and. Uh, Margaret Aguilar at one point was doing it. Sometimes Jesse is. So when we were saying, okay, well, you have Ugam Watershed under your authority or your progress, your work that you're doing under Ugam, what are you doing? So we just want to make sure that with each of these um, goals, there's somebody other than an action lead that may just get information, but within some of the agencies to move it forward. Um, for the Southern Master Plan, for example, I know that the map, the uh, mayors are supposed to um, identify somebody within the mayor's council to lead that effort, and it needs to be somebody in the south. And I know they've been having a very hard time identifying a, a mayor that wants to champion that cause. BSP is the um, secretary is providing technical assistance, but they. When I've talked to them about it, they said, we need the champion, whoever's going to lead the Southern Master Plan to be identified. And it's so maybe it's in BSP that is that person that's going to be nudging the mayor's council to say, hey, give me somebody that's going to start working on this. Here's what information do you need? And so it, it, in particular instances, it's like that. I think for the Micronesia Challenge specifically, Although I'm identified as the focal point and I network with a lot of people about the progress that people are doing, I think it, it's now come to a point where it would be good if we can have somebody that sits maybe with Austin's group to help coordinate and provide that data that will serve to coordinate specifically for, for our group, um, the thriving natural resources, as well as for the Micronesia Challenge. Maybe somebody within Austin's um, organization and Sea Grants organization. That would be very beneficial. So, God, we I have one, Vanji, from the Mayor's Council, the new mayor from Iran. Yes. That's right, oh. who's a Waterworks retiree. Exactly, Tony, right? You're that great yeah. idea. I'm gonna ask him to see if he can raise his hand. I think he will. 
you know, and, and just let him know, Van, Vanji, that, you know, our administration will work very closely with him. Like he's not going to be out there all by himself, you know? Great. Thank you. That's a great, great, Tony's great and he will get it done. So yeah, that will be good. I will talk to him. Thank you so much. Austin, uh, do you have any feedback or response? Are you thinking about uh, also maybe embedding uh, somebody in um, in um, your outfit that would be assigned to this? Um, we're happy to to assist with that, if, uh, especially if there's uh, additional support for the Micronesia Challenge. We can identify uh, an existing position or um, th there's lots of great people that are up and coming that would like to do this type of work. Um, uh, and a really great training opportunity as suggested by the youth here on this call. Um, that's um, an excellent way to continuing uh, building up our local capacity here. We already have a Micronesia Challenge uh, intern. It would be great to have uh, a Micronesia Challenge full-time employee to be working on all of these uh, objectives that were mentioned. I do have a question for, um, for Vanji and, and Fran. Uh, I, I think the... Um, the Micronesia Challenge goals are, are really important to conserve 50% uh, of marine resources and 30% of terrestrial resources. Uh, what, mechanisms are, what mechanisms do you think um, we would need to, to achieve those goals? Is it more MPAs um, or what kind of policies can help us meet those deliverables? Well, from the onset, we realized that the MPAs are a very um, touchy conversation with fishermen because they feel like they're the, being in, they're the only ones in the realm of natural resource management that are being targeted. So what we wanted to do to achieve that is more really about improving coral health in, and not just coral, but marine health resources. So upland restoration is really how we want to be able to achieve um, the marine component. Enforcement is a big problem that we can see that the MPAs are working and spillover probably is occurring. But then we also have the problem with illegal fishing, um, things like that. So enforcement is always going to be an issue. Department of Ag needs assistance in conservation officers for fires, yeah. for illegal hunting, for uh, illegal fishing. So I think it, it's enforcement. It's um looking at the uh upland restoration because upland restoration does a lot it will help us with water resources it will help us with invasive species it's a very cross-cutting type of uh target if we can take care of that target we can certainly take care of a lot of our other issues including invasive species so i think we will update the strategy to see what more we could do um working with the working groups in this um, a lot of it is in the MC strategy is also reflected in the coral reef um, initiatives um, strategy that was adopted already. So we're trying not to replicate anything, but try to see where all of the ones that are being done in terms of restoration work, we're capturing the progress. So really all of our goals for the, for the MC is really about capturing the progress that there's so many people are working on. And we just need a way to capture that. And so also just, I just want to add um, to the watershed plants as well, um, why it was ranked high. It's because we do need these management plants in order to apply for like federal funding yes. or to even get our watersheds be recognized by the U.S. Coral Reef Task Force as a priority watershed and like you know, usually they go for watersheds that have management plans. Right now in Guam, we really don't have any watershed management plans. So that's why it's ranked high. Do you think that the Micronesia Challenge will consider um, the 50% marine uh, resources protected? W will that be achieved by creating a watershed conservation management plan? That is our hope. So it's really about looking at yeah. effectively managing the marine resource. And so um, wasn't this your doctorate, right? What does doing upland work, how does it affect the um, marine community? 
I think that that's, that's a question that how we determine that 50% and how we're going to get there. We have to get a longer conversation, but it, I think we're going to try to base it off some of the work that you've already done in terms of linking the upland restoration to the marine resources. Okay, great. That plus, that plus the, oh. I just say I just want to make sure that, that that's something that that counts and it doesn't have to be the the term that we've been used to uh, as MPAs. What else? Right. Oh, that requirement. So that's great to hear. Thank you. And it's all linked with the marine work as well. Um, so you know everything that we monitor the coral, the fish, the benthic, that all feeds into like what's happening like upland, and so you kind of like link that rich to reef, um, yeah. and then you have a better understanding of you know how we are in terms of you know coral health and fish abundances and things like that so, i think trina wants to say something yeah i'll just add um that uh, many of the other jurisdictions so the new target is effectively manage at least 50 percent, and it's out to the eez so uh it could also be things like um the scuba spear ban could be contributing to that so um uh, other types of fisheries management or things like that could could be contributing. Uh, there's sort of the group is trying to come up with standardized monitoring across, uh, as Fran mentioned, and um, so it's not sort of like what counts or doesn't count. It's 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 everyone coming to the to a, a level of understanding of how we're going to measure the outcomes, and then um, each place has their own ways of achieving it. It looks like similar to what happened from the first microbiome. You know, um, Vanjie, I just wanted to add. I think that uh, Lonnie Brennan's on the call, and I think maybe if you get together with her, you we can have a maybe design a program. Uh, you know, recently, uh, thanks to Senator Amanda, she uh, has appropriated money to restart the uh, DYA summer youth program. And so originally, prior to the pandemic, we were looking at a model that Department of Education used um, that was a combination of um, some uh, knowledge sharing opportunities, but plus also some uh, practical learning possibilities. But I think the multi-generational uh, approach that I'm hearing from the youth and, um, and the other things that they might wanna get accomplish, I think maybe we can develop a, a good program component and uh, start doing that kind of work, maybe hopefully after this pandemic, uh, yeah. but you know, plan for something in the upcoming summer with um, with the students. And there is, um, uh, is Lani still on the call here? Yes, I am, uh, Lieutenant Governor, and I, and I am gonna reach out to Vanji. We do have um, some money and yes, it was, uh, um, largely due to Senator Amanda Shelton. But we, we also have a lot of opportunity I see here where we connect and uh, we can connect and engage the youth that we have at DYA. And it's something to cultivate their interest in climate change and also to incentivize them for um, perhaps staying out of trouble to work at, you know, in a summer program that we're, that we're just now um, crafting. So yeah, I'm really excited to talk to you guys. Thank you, yes. Very excited about that. I think we also want to make, um, if we can also incorporate the people that are at the senior citizens homes, I mean, not the homes, the centers. Right, make, intergenerational activities. Yes, that, that's something I think that we've been trying to do for a very long time, but we've never be, been able to do it. So I'm looking forward to meeting with you, Lonnie, and we can um, work on something like that because I think it's time. It, it's the kids, uh, students, and the youth really want it. Definitely. So we'll get together. Um, we can meet next week. Thanks okay. so much. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments for this group from anybody on the Zoom, in the Zoom room? All right. Sounds like we have a, well, you know, we have a very good presentation. I think that um, I like how you came up with your ranking. That's, uh, and I guess when we meet um, two meetings from now, when we talk about the next steps, uh, and maybe just to telegraph to all of the, the uh, committee chairs that that's a really, really good, effective way of 
of, um, of prioritizing and, and um, you know, pretty much evaluating where we're at with, on different fronts. So I, I really like that. Any other questions or comments on this, um, on this area? I guess you did such a fine job, Vanjie. Fran. <laughs> and Fran. Thanks, uh -huh. Fran. And everyone in our group. All right. So, Governor, do you have any um, anything you might want to add? No. Just looking forward to making it happen. It's Great. happening. Just to it's reach happening. our goals. Yes. Yes. And uh, thank, so thank you, you Romina. Uh, I know that you've been working on the on uh, the climate change resiliency piece um, as well, and I do want to say that uh, when I the last time I saw you, uh, we were able to see the folks from the NASA lab and all of the excellent work that they were doing developing the technology to really go and assess what was going on um, with the seashore and with the coral reefs. Uh, and every time I, I go and talk to students, at least at pre-pandemic, um, and the folks, the students in STEM, um, there's a lot of interest in getting some face time in the future with um, the key folks. Of, since we're in the in Zoom era, maybe we might want to plan something like that. And really, a lot of the students that had been selected or have been competing off island in any one of the STEM competitions are looking forward to having some. Uh, FaceTime with the folks from the NASA lab. So I wonder if I could just uh, maybe bookmark that and we can uh, come up with something for them. Oh, absolutely. Um, COVID-19 really quashed a lot of our educational plans this year, which is which is pretty awful. But um, yeah, Dr. Chariath had mentioned that he would love to do uh, sort of a webinar Q&A type thing we just have we just were awarded a space grant so we have some opportunities financial opportunities for uh fellowships for students and we're also looking at um uh k through 12 as well so um yes i think that'll be great it'll go hand in hand with um incorporating the youth and getting them to um see how it connects to our planet and and climate change great all right, well, I know that uh, Dr. Shelton has put in um, a uh, model for conservation youth summer program in the chat room that uh, perhaps you can take a look at. And then uh, I hear the, a lot of focus on the multi-generational opportunities, right, for sharing. If I'm not mistaken, you're looking at really, uh, and maybe we could try and figure that out. Melvin is uh, acting over at the library and Chamorro Fairs and there's a lot of resources, you know, a lot of photos, for example, I've seen at the archival center that um, a lot of youth may not recognize because of how development has changed the island. So it might be the cornerstone of, of uh, uh, intergenerational youth program, perhaps, uh, you know, and seeing all of the assets that we have on Guam that we often overlook because we're just in our backyard. Okay. All right. Well, it Thank looks you. like this has been a very effective and productive meeting. <laughs> um, we're going to end it under time. Uh, and so I just want to thank everybody for all the work they're doing out there collectively. Uh, the governor and I really, really, truly appreciate it. Um, we have a uh, lot of more energy. The governor is very energized. I can guarantee you that. Uh, so um, I think that we'd be, I'm very optimistic with all the different uh, work that can be supported and can be intertwined um, as we really take a look and see what's happening on the island and empower those that are doing it. So uh, thank you very much. Governor, do you have anything closing? Okay, Dr. Shelton and Lauren, anything from you? Um, I just want to uh, point out to Vanjie, in case you didn't see it in the chat, that Brent Weesey said he will help with building codes for climate readiness. So yes. make sure you guys talk about it. Yes. Okay, that's uh, it. And Angie uh, or Fran, could you touch base with uh, Melvin Wampat Borja about uh, the EEZ that's, uh, that's going on? Okay. Romina, thanks also for sending the link on the uh, Pacific Islands Regional Climate Assessment that um, was announced recently. Really appreciate that. 
Congratulations on that, Romina. It's uh, it's making the rounds, getting a lot of attention. Uh, even my mom texted me right before this meeting, and she's really worried about our house in Assen on the beach. So now I have to call her and explain your report to her. <laughs> That's <laughs> multi generational. Love it. Connections. <laughs> Please don't build a seawall. <laughs> yeah, that, that's been there for a very long time. So it will probably wash away one day soon. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, we will be sending out the updated um, uh, strategy as well as then you'll see our ranking. Very good. Thank you very thank much. You. Have thank a good you. day. Thank you. you bye. Thank, thank you. you, everyone.